What a sad way to go out for Kevin Lee. Got absolutely bulldozed in less than a minute by Renat Faradinov. And this was in the welterweight division. Kevin Lee was always a better lightweight, but it seems that he just can't make the weight class or something anymore. He looked actually pretty big in there. His back was super thick. Looked like he put on weight and actually met the welterweight size. He's just short, man. He's 5'9". And he went up against Renat, who's 6'1". Even though Kevin Lee still had the reach advantage, which is insane that he's 77 inches in reach. But yeah, no head movement. He looked like a, like a fish out of water in the stand-up. He didn't shoot one takedown until he got dropped. And by that point, it was too late because Renat is also a very good wrestler. Renat's record is a bit confusing because in some places it says he's 21 and 1 and on a 20 win streak. But if you look at other places like Tapology, where I say they're the most accurate when it comes to records, he's 21 and 2. He's on a 17 win streak. But regardless, it's an amazing record. And Kevin Lee this was his return after his Diego Sanchez fight in Habib's Eagle FC. Honestly, that fight wasn't that great. He came back, had no head movement, just looked to strike with Renat. Actually connected with a good counter right straight, but every time Renat threw punches at him, he didn't move his head. He looked to parry everything with his right hand, but he did get caught by some jabs. He almost got caught clean when Renat threw in a big overhand right. And that was the thing that conditioned Kevin Lee to get hit by the right straight. It's a short fight, but a lot of people miss this. Notice an ending sequence where Renat drops him. Look what Kevin Lee does with both of his hands. So when Renat throws in the one, right, he's coming in there with a long jab. Kevin Lee looks to parry it with his right hand. And what does he do with his left as Renat is looking to continue with his punches and throw the right straight? Kevin Lee picks his left arm up high. What is this guard? This guards a right overhand, not a right straight that he threw before. Renat threw an overhand that almost caught Kevin Lee clean. And that right overhand definitely caught Kevin Lee's attention to the point where he did not want to get hit by it again. So instead of seeing the right straight coming at him, seeing Renat's body motion to recognize that the right straight is coming, not a right overhand, he picks his left arm up high, exposing the center. And you might ask, what are the body motions? What are Renat's tells of throwing the overhand versus his right straight? Well, they're very different, actually. Renat's throwing an overhand like he's clubbing you. So his right arm is going to be coming all the way down from his side. His arm is only slightly bent, and his arm does not change in form or bend all the way to the target. So you can see his arm is coming wide from his hip and over his head. Now when he throws this right straight, his arm is tucked into his chest right as he fires it and then flares his elbow out wide and his arm is completely bent. His hand is nearly touching his own shoulder and that's where he springs out his fist from that form. There's a giant difference between the form of his overhand and his right straight. It's just Kevin Lee didn't see it. And it might show that Kevin Lee is just not as proficient in striking as some of the other strikers of this division and the lightweight division to recognize these kind of punches getting thrown. For an example, like maybe we could think of one of the better boxers in the UFC, Dustin Poirier, would have absolutely saw that right straight coming at him because he would see the difference in form compared to the overhand. He would not mistake in that punch for an overhand where grapplers like Kevin Lee might gets caught clean by the right straight and dropped it looked like the fight was over from there kevin lee was so rocked they went right into his wrestling instincts he didn't even think about what was going on subconsciously his mind went back to his high school and college days the development stages of his martial arts skills and went straight for the single leg even though he completely exposed his neck and we're not sunk in my favorite submission the high elbow guillotine and put kevin lee out in three seconds from the moment he readjusted the guillotine, because he readjusted the grip like two or three times, the last time he readjusted from that point to where Kevin Lee dropped and looked like he was out, you could count three seconds. That's a perfect choke. If they go on around three seconds, you know your choke is pretty much perfect. And all credit to Herb Dean as well, because it was a very tricky situation. Kevin Lee's left arm was being sat on by Renat. His arm is under Renat and it's not free, so it can actually act like he's still conscious. If you try to pull that arm, you're going to feel some resistance, but it's not from Kevin Lee. It's because Renat is sitting on his arm. So credit to Herb Dean for recognizing and stopping the fight. And that's a tough one for Kevin Lee, man. This guy's been talked about for a long time to be like the next big thing, and he's not that old. He does have a lot of fights. He's taken a lot of damage. He's been dropped a few times in his career, but he is only 30 years old. And this is an example of some fighters peak at different ages. Kevin Lee peaked at a much younger age than your average fighter. He was at his best around where he beat Michael Chiesa and then fought for the interim title against Tony Ferguson and then after beat Edson Barboza. That was the best we've ever seen Kevin Lee. And the crazy thing about that is he was 24 and 25 years old. Kevin Lee hit his prime at 24 and 25 years old. If you want to consider...